Okay, welcome back. So this one here I'm going to do the black flame on, but instead of doing the diagonal like I did before, this time I'm going to do the top and the bottom. So I'm going to take the, the bottom of the t-shirt and I'm just going to fold it right up here. Basically I'm just folding the bottom edge of the t-shirt right up to where the shoulder seams are. <clears throat> Actually, nope, I think I want to go a little bit higher. So I'm just going to kind of adjust the t-shirt. Also, what I'm starting with is a t-shirt. I pre-washed it and then uh, just spun it out so it's barely damp right now uh, with just plain water. I'm going to fold it. I'm going to remove color once again with the Out White Bright uh, using 200 degree Fahrenheit water. And then from there, I'm going to add color back in. So to start with, I'm going to do my pleating. I'm going to pleat all the way across here. So I'm just going to turn this sideways. And I'm just going to kind of adjust the t-shirt a little bit so that I can kind of pleat right up the sleeve, right across the bottom. And that's going to incorporate all of this. And then I'm going to adjust the bottom part over here. Same thing. So I'm just going to try and line up the bottom with the top as much as possible, even though they're not perfectly in alignment. So we're just going to do those same pleats, about an inch tall. Like I say, this one, I, I haven't folded it and done it this way yet, but this was what came to me in my meditation, so I decided I wanted to try that one out as I was showing you guys how to do a single black flame rainbow. Okay, let's tie this one up and then we'll be ready to go. Okay, so there's the T. I'm going to set this one up on the incline like I did for the last one. So give me a minute. Okay, we're all set up on the incline here. Once again, I'm going to use the Out White Bright. And I have a glove on just so that I can move the fabric around and not get this right on here. I also have my window open directly in front of my table here so all of the fumes can go out so I don't have to try and wear a mask. This is something that I, I like to do outside or I'll put a mask on if it's too cold. Okay, my water was already boiled and cooling down so it's ready to go. I think on this one I want my flames to go a little bit further into my shirt so I'm just going to add a little bit more further down here and let it drip. I think I'm going to call that good there. Like I say, this here, however much color you remove is kind of up to you. How far down, you could just do just a couple inches if you want, or you could do even more of the t-shirt. Um, but this is looks good for me, how I want it. So I'm going to do a really good rinse on this. Once again, I'm not going to try and show that on video. I'm basically just going to run it under cold water and just squeeze it until this brown color stops coming out. You can see the, the brown liquid, yellowish liquid down here in the bottom. That's what's going to squeeze out of here as I rinse this in the cold water. So once I'm done rinsing, I will spin it out so it's barely damp and then put soda ash on it. And, oh, actually, no, we're going to do a hot water irrigation dye. You could also set up and do an ice dye 
Um, so to start with, I'm just going to rinse. So stay tuned. Okay, I rinsed this really well and then spun out the excess. So now it's just barely damp. And now I'm going to go ahead and add my dye powder along with my soda ash. I've mixed the two of them together. The ratio that I've been playing with lately is uh, one tablespoon of powdered dye to one third cup of soda ash. And I use a sifter to get all of the, the lumps out of my soda ash. I have bought this locally, but they also have them on Amazon. Uh, it's got a hand crank on the side here, but usually you can just pour your soda ash in and sift it. And it's got wire mesh in here that catches. It's just a, a flour sifter, basically. So, and then about a month ago, um, let me back up. I've been searching for the, the perfect way, trying to use a spoon to do the tap method. I mean, I've done that and it works, but I knew that there had to be a better way. And I've seen those sand art things where they, they do those really intricate, detailed sand art things, but those tools that they have, they're very expensive. So I knew, but... I wanted something like that and then about a month ago I seen somebody post one of these sugar writers on uh, one of the tie-dye pages so and I thought that is exactly what I need so I got six of them in so that I could do the rainbow and I have played with it just a little bit but this will be the first time in doing it on video the main thing I've found with this is like I say you need to have your soda ash so that it doesn't have any clumps in it and a couple of the dyes, I, I noticed the green and the yellow, the dye itself will sometimes ball up just a little bit and block it. But for the most part, I've been having good success with these sugar writers. Um, really, all it is is just a container for your, your dye powder and your soda ash here. And then this top part here, it just has a, a, a long funnel on here. And then it vibrates, which then helps the dye slowly sift itself out of here. So anyways, that's what I'm going to use to apply my dyes to this t-shirt here. So that I can apply them in nice lines or whatever. From here, I'm going to take it out. I think I'm going to do just a little bit of an incline um, and then do the hot water irrigation. Uh, this is only my second time doing hot water irrigation, so we're just going to call this an experiment, see how it goes. But I'm going to take this outside and get set up, and we're going to just do it out there. So stay tuned. Okay, we're all set up outside. Like I said, I put this on a bit of an incline. Also, since I started with a tea that was barely damp, I decided I wanted to put a towel underneath just to see if it would help pull the, the liquid through. I do that with my liquid dye, so I thought, what the heck, let's try it with the hot water irrigation and see how it works. So I have my sprayer here. I just, well, let's see if I can get it in the picture. <laughs> here. I just bought this on Amazon and I'm just using the, the nozzle that allows me to kind of twist it down so that I get a fine mist. Um, I'm not an expert at this by no means. Like I say, this is only my second time doing a hot water irrigation. So we're just going to try this out and see how it works for this. So let's see. So let that 
that soak in just a little bit. I'm just going to keep spraying this. And then I might end up even uh, after I get this dye to all penetrate in, I'll check the bottom and see how it looks if needed. I will flip it over and add more dye to the other side, but we'll see how this goes. And this here is the 200 degrees water, so I brought it up to boiling, let it cool just a little bit and then poured it in there. It might have gone in a little warmer than 200, but beans that are gonna come through this long hose and then out into the mist, I wanna make sure I don't lose too much heat, so. And like I say, at this point, after you put the dye on, you could just as easily do this as an ice dye, so. I just wanted to experiment and see what a hot water irrigation would do for this. Getting closer to having all of this dye in there and then at that point I'm going to peek at that and see if I need to add dye to the other side. Okay, so I'm getting some dye penetration down through there, but overall I think I want to flip this over and add some more powder to the other side. So... So what I'm going to do is let this sit for a bit. I'm going to bring my stuff out here and then flip it and apply dye. So hold on. Okay, I'm back inside. My neighbor decided that now was the perfect time to do some leaf blowing, so... <laughs> Too noisy to work outside, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and flip this over and add more dye to it. Um, so what I'm going to do is just lay a couple rags down on there, just to help soak up some of that excess liquid, and I'm just going to flip this straight over onto this towel. So hopefully that'll catch some of that excess liquid there. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and put a coat of dye on in the same places, the same colors. Okay, so now I got a new coat of dye applied on here. I didn't apply the blue quite as solid just because I had some good blue saturation coming through. But I'm going to take this back now into uh, my bathtub and finish the, the hot water irrigation. So let me get set up. Okay, we're ready to go here. And one of the other little tips just in the, like I say, this is my second time doing hot water irrigation. And one of the things I noticed is that the water doesn't come out of here hot immediately. And that's because it's got the, oops, it's got this whole tube that the water is in. And this here can be cold as well as the plastic container. So what I've been doing is filling it up with hot water and running it through the hose. And then I dump the hot water out and then I pour the 200 degree water in there. That way the, the water is as hot as possible when it comes out the end. And I also do a pre-spray. It takes about a minute to clear this hose. Maybe less than a minute, but 30 seconds or so. You can usually feel the, the water. If you run it on your hand, you can feel how hot it is coming out the, the end there into the mist. So just a little tip. And I do have this in a tub 
within my bathtub here so that this dye isn't going straight into my tub. But if you are doing this straight into your bathtub and it stains it, a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser is what I use to get stains, the dye stains, out of my tub, sinks, and countertops. Just wet it a little bit and most of the stains just come right off. Alright, looks like I got good dye saturation down in there. So I think I'm going to call this one good. Although I did do a hot water irrigation on it, I could rinse and wash this right now. But all of the rest of my t-shirts I dyed today, I did liquid dyes. So I'm just going to go ahead and let this one batch for 24 or 48 hours with the rest of them and wash them all together. So, thank you for watching. Okay, one more. So this is another black flame, but I instead of doing it diagonally, you saw that I folded the top and the bottom up. So that's what is up here, is the top of the t-shirt and the bottom of the t-shirt. And then <clears throat> I did a hot water irrigation where I put the powdered dye on that's mixed with the soda ash and then the hot water to mix the dyes. And anyway, let's open this up. So. There is the black flame rainbow, like the rainbows, they're the flames, top and bottom. You'll see the rest in about two seconds. Thank you for watching. Okay, so that last one that I just did, that you saw with the top and the bottom, it didn't come out quite how I envisioned, and I think it was because I had the, the double open layer there where before I had you know the layers but it was it was solid and I had more room for the out white bright to run so this time what I'm going to try is folding the top and the bottom separately tying them up and then laying them side by side and doing that if I can kind of twist it up and around anyway so that's what we're going to try here so to start with I got a black tea that I've done a pre-wash on it spun it out so it's just barely damp with just plain water um, so what I'm going to do is pleat across the bottom tie it up pleat across the top tie it up and then hopefully marry the two together tie them up and remove some color so let's go into super speed mode and get this done Now I got the top and the bottom tied, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just kind of move this out of the way and I'm going to tie the two of these together and hopefully then that will get the, the nice flame action as I put the out white bright on and let it run down into the tee. So once again another experiment so we'll see how this one goes. Okay, here we go. So I got this set up on an incline. Like I say, what I use is just a couple dye bottles. I fill them up with uh, some water so that I can set my rack on them and you can kind of adjust how much of a slant you want it on. And then what I'm going to do here is I have, uh, first off, I open my window so I have some nice air circulation here. Uh, that way I don't have to try to wear a mask. Uh, this here does have some really fine dust. You don't want to breathe that. So I would wear a mask, work outside, make sure you have good ventilation. So anyways, I'm going to put some out white bright on here, and then we're going to add some hot water to it.
And ultimately what I'm trying to do is get some nice running action. So that's why I'm pouring my dye very, or my hot water very slowly because I'm wanting some of this to soak in and kind of run down and give me some color removal in these long darts. That's why I called this one the black flame because that's what it looked like to me. Black flame coming out of this. Flip this over and do some work on the back side. Okay, I think I'm going to call that good. I'm going to give this a really good rinse and then I'm going to set up and get it dyed. So I'll be back soon. Okay, we're back to put some dye on this thing and I'm going to go ahead and do another uh, hot water irrigation on this. So I'm going to use my sugar writers again and this time I'm going to use instead of doing the rainbow, I'm going to do uh, just bluebird and deep purple and then I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of uh, turquoise on here. So both of these here have been mixed one tablespoon, which is three teaspoons, to one third cup soda ash, both of these. This one here is just straight dye powder. I'll sprinkle some of that on in here and then probably just put a little bit of soda ash over top. And then we're just going to go for it and see what happens. So I'm going to start out with the, the blue bird here. So. I think I'm going to put this on a rack so that it's ready to go. So let me just stick that right in there. Okay, you guys can see that. Alright, I'm going to take this uh, outside and I'm going to boil my water up and we're going to do some hot water irrigation. So hang out for just a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, we're all set up here. So I have my dye, my powder, or my soda ash on there. I put it on a towel just to try to help soak everything through. So we're just going to go for this and see what we get. Okay, I think I sprayed enough water through this thing. Um, the top looks pretty good. The bottom isn't quite as patterned as the top is, but like I say, this is only like my third hot water irrigation, so I think we're just going to call that good. There's some color coming through most of the way on all of these parts here. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse this and then wash this right now.
Okay, I'm gonna let that soak in there for a bit and then we'll come back to it. Okay, I got this thing all rinsed up, so I'm gonna get it opened up and then we'll wash it and finish this video off. Let's see, so I got a little bit better action, but still not quite what I was hoping for. But what the heck, you get an idea, you try it out, adjust it, and see what you get. But it's still a cool, cool t-shirt. So let's get it washed and finish. Thank you for watching.